Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor. And today's topic is cholesterol, what they don't want you to know. So there's a lot of misinformation, in my opinion, about cholesterol. We actually need cholesterol, and I'm going to share with you why we need cholesterol, why it's so important for our overall health and longevity. I'll break down what it is. I'm going to talk about the LDL, the HDL, the different lipoproteins, and some of the causes of imbalance of healthy cholesterol levels. And of course, I will share some natural tips how to find that balance again for your cholesterol. So if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and also click that bell so that you're always notified of my newest and latest uploads. And if you do have questions and comments throughout the show, please drop them in the comment section below. I appreciate all the gifts and the thumbs up that you can give me throughout the show as well. So let's talk about cholesterol. Now, since the 1950s, so around the 1950s, cholesterol really did get a bad rap. And this was based on unfounded science or so-called science that, you know, some doctors got together and said that cholesterol was the major culprit in terms of cardiovascular disease. It was something that could be measured in blood work. And this is something that in fact, in terms of what the research now shows us and has for probably 50 years is that there's no direct correlation between high cholesterol and heart disease. Yes, I just said that. There's no direct correlation between high cholesterol levels and heart disease. And cardiovascular disease, heart disease is more a factor of insulin resistance, which we're going to be talking about, inflammation and oxidative stress, so free radical damage. So this is something that you know, when we look at the way that high cholesterol is treated and it's supposed to be a preventative for heart disease, it's not really founded in the real science. So why do we need cholesterol? Well, your body makes cholesterol as it is needed. And what's interesting to note is that on average, your body gets only about 15% of the blood cholesterol from food. The rest, so the 85%, is what our body is actually manufacturing in terms of our cholesterol levels. And the more cholesterol in our diet, the less that our body actually has to make and vice versa. So there's this happy balance and finding those proper levels of cholesterol is something that the body is doing always on its own. So when you hear, you know, somebody says that certain foods are inherently high in cholesterol, so I know this is true, you know, they used to say that saturated fats and things like shrimp that naturally have cholesterol in the food itself will raise your cholesterol that you need to avoid these foods. It's not really founded in science because we know that our body will always compensate because of that feedback loop of cholesterol production in the liver that it will always try to find the balance. Now, there are certain foods that will definitely offset the hormonal balances in terms of cholesterol production, and that's something that I'll share in today's episode. Now, cholesterol Cholesterol is not the bad guy. We need cholesterol for a lot of different functions in the body, and one of them is our brain function. So about 25% of our neuronal function in the brain and our brain activity is reliant on cholesterol. We also need cholesterol to help to make that fatty myelin sheath, which I often talk about on the outside of our nerves. And this is really important for our cellular communication in terms of our cell to cell and nerve connection. So whether that's in our brain, in our nervous system, really important that we have enough cholesterol to be able to do that. Now, naturally occurring cholesterol is linked to mental function. So if we lower our cholesterol levels too much, then this can lead lead to poor cognitive performance and memory tasks. So this is something, again, we need cholesterol to keep our brain awake and alive. We also need cholesterol for different conversions with enzyme systems into our active vitamin D. So yes, if you don't have enough cholesterol, you can't make enough vitamin D, which we know is an important antioxidant, really important for protecting our lung cells after viral infections, really important for our energy levels and for longevity as well. We also know that cholesterol levels actually are lower naturally in the summertime and our own production of cholesterol actually increases in the wintertime. And this is especially true for people that live in colder climates like I do in Canada. Our cholesterol is higher in the winter. Can you guess why? Well, we need to make more 
vitamin D. So we need more of that cofactor for the vitamin D production of course, being cholesterol. And that's why typically our, if you have your cholesterol checked in the wintertime, it may be a little bit higher as compared to the summer months. And it's something that, of course, we make in the liver and almost every cell in the body requires having enough cholesterol, especially on the outer cell membrane. And that's really important for proper cellular function. But we use that cholesterol as a raw material. So it helps to make those cell membranes and the structures within our cells to also make our hormones so our sex hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, even our stress hormones are reliant on having enough cholesterol. We also need cholesterol to generate our bile salts. And this is important, of course, for our fat digestion and absorption of our fat soluble vitamins, which is really important, of course. So things like vitamin A, vitamin E need cholesterol for that bile salt production to be able to actually absorb and get that nutrient density from those important nutrients. Nutrient. So when we talk about cholesterol and its breakdown products, especially to our more important hormones, this has something to do with our stress and our cortisol levels as well and our leptin levels. So when we have leptin resistance, something can happen called pregnenolone steel, where preferentially our body is going to take that cholesterol and that will then make the pregnenolone, as we can see on this chart. But then the breakdown products of the pregnenolone will preferentially go towards that cortisol, which of course we know is our stress hormone from the progesterone. And we won't be able to go over to the other side, which we see on the chart to the DHEA. So now we have less testosterone, we have less estrogen because of that pregnenolone steel. And that's why, you know, when we understand this, we can kind of see how that leptin resistance really is so, so important in terms of finding that balance for our other hormones as well. So by fixing the leptin resistance, this will definitely help in terms of our proper cholesterol breakdown products in terms of our hormones. Now, we also need cholesterol to help in terms of plugging holes. And by its nature, cholesterol is very reparative. So things like toxic chemicals, free radicals, other pathogens and trans fats can be very damaging to our endothelial tissue. And of course, this is, and it's very, very thin. And this is the lining of our blood vessels. And what cholesterol does is it'll go in and it's sort of like the patchwork maker and it will help to patch up some of these holes and that endothelial damage. So we do need cholesterol, but having the right breakdown products of our cholesterol and the right ratios is what's so important in terms of our overall health. So when we do need that endothelial repair, it's the liver that's sending the LDL cholesterol. And I'm going to sort of break that down for you what type to that area of damage to help to repair that tissue. Now HDL is interesting because this is the carrier that helps to recycle and take that spent LDL particle back to the liver to be removed by the body. So they work hand in hand and that's why having the proper ratios of your HDL and your LDL lipoproteins is really important for your cardiovascular health. So not always what you've been told in terms of of, you know, the good and the bad cholesterol. It's a little bit of a myth, and I'm going to get into that in just a second. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Janine. Today, I'm talking all about cholesterol, what they don't want you to know. We are streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook today. And I love and I welcome all of your questions and comments throughout the show. So what is cholesterol? Well, it is a lipid. So lipids are fats and fatty substances that are used by the body as a source of energy. Now we have the lipo protein. So in my opinion, they're sort of misnamed, mislabeled, because people say that they're the good and the bad cholesterol. They're actually not cholesterol. Cholesterol is part of them, but they are lipoproteins and they're transport molecules to transport. And when we talk about LDL, so the low density lipoprotein, this transports mostly cholesterol. And the primary role of the LDL is to transport the fat soluble nutrients into the cell into those membranes, into tissues for their proper use. LDL is also helping in delivering the saturated fat into that cell membrane. Now, the low density lipoprotein has different components. So there's different types. There's pattern A, which is a larger particle size. And this is sort of the better one. It's more cardioprotective, lower insulin levels, and you're 
A1C levels are associated with these larger, more buoyant particles. So that's a good thing. Now the pattern B LDL is smaller in size, and this is the one that can actually cause that repair mechanism when the endothelial lining of the arteries are in trouble. And this is something that, yes, it has its purpose, but too much of this is when this can lead to oxidation and this can form those plaques in the arteries. So when we talk about plaque formation and having clear, clean arteries, this is the problematic, the pattern B LDL. And this is something that we have to make sure that we don't have the wrong ratio of these different types of low density lipoproteins. Now, so our higher blood glucose levels and high fasting insulin levels is going to be problematic because this is associated with more of these pattern B LDLs. Now you've probably heard of HDL. It's often referred to as the good cholesterol. Again, in its nomenclature, I'm not sure that that's the best way to approach this, but it is the high density lipoprotein. And it also has a high cholesterol content, but the cholesterol to protein ratio, it has about 45 to 50 percent of the protein. Now this is the cleanup mechanism. If you've ever seen the show Scandal, you know Huck goes in and cleans up the mess. Well, that's exactly what HDL does. And it sweeps up those LDL particles, which can be compromising, of course, to our artery health and transports them back to the liver for that proper recycling. So HDL cleans things up. And it is important that the LDL is cleared from the blood efficiently because of its high susceptibility to the oxidation. So we know that the HDL is working with the LDL and it's important to have that proper ratio. Now I'll talk a little bit about triglycerides. So usually on your blood work, you probably have this one tested as well. And triglycerides are a type of fat or a lipid that is found in your blood that helps to supply your body with energy. So we need those triglycerides. It's part of, in terms of making our ATP, this is part of our energy production or of course our cells. You Use that ATP for energy. And when our triglycerides are high, this is problematic in terms of high insulin levels as well, because then you have insulin resistance and then possibly fatty liver disease. So again, finding that balance of those ratios of your triglycerides, your HDL, your LDL, your total cholesterol is important. And to be able to do that, I've got certainly some tips in today's episode, which I will share with you to help to find that healthy balance for your cholesterol. Okay, so when we talk about finding those healthy ratios, it really is dependent on on what is going on in your body. So on any one day, your cholesterol numbers, your total cholesterol, your lipoproteins, so the LDL, the HDL could be at different spots. Now, if you have recently lost weight or gained weight, these numbers will change. If you've gone to a more keto or a very low carb diet, these numbers will change as well. And if you are fasting, so if you are practicing intermittent fasting or, you know, OMAD, so one meal a day fasting, this will change your cholesterol ratios as well. So just be very mindful of this. And this is something that you speak to your practitioner who have ever is testing your blood lipid levels to let them know, hey, you know, this is different. I'm doing this because that will make a difference if they know how to read your blood work correctly. That will make a difference in, you know, the maybe suggestion of doing something to you know, alleviate those high numbers when in fact it's actually your body is working on your behalf to get healthier. So that's something that I want you to be aware about and, you know, open up those, those healthy conversations with your practitioner, with your doctor around your cholesterol levels. And of course, do a lot more research because there's a lot of information and misinformation out there about cholesterol, but doing your due diligence to really understand your numbers is something that you can definitely do. If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Janine. Today I'm talking about about cholesterol, what they don't want you to know, and we're streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook. So what are some of the causes of the cholesterol imbalance? Well, number one, an inflammatory diet. So if you're eating a lot of the wrong foods that it's causing a lot of inflammation in your body, you know, probably if you've watched me before, you know that I often talk about the polyunsaturated fatty acids as being in very inflammatory. This is something that you definitely want to, you know, be made aware of in terms of your cholesterol levels as well. 
Now, another cause of cholesterol imbalance is lack of exercise. So being sedentary, not moving your body enough can be a cause for your cholesterol levels, your lipid levels to be out of balance. Another one, of course, is stress. We know that stress is, an, is one of the number one killers. Why is that? Well, it causes a whole hormonal cascade, as we saw with the pregnenolone steel, that this is a factor as well. And that relates back to the leptin signaling and that breakdown of your cholesterol cholesterol to go where it needs to go can't be in times of stress and it will preferentially go towards that cortisol, especially with that leptin resistance with the pregnant lone steel. So we've got to manage our stress, doing our best to be able to do that in a natural way. And that's where I'm going to share some tips when we get to the tips section of today's show as to how to do that. As well as insulin resistance, we know that when we're spiking our blood glucose levels, when insulin is overtaxed and is now resistant because the pancreas is kind of saying, uh, no, I'm not going to make any more insulin. So now you have the resistance. This will then spike your blood sugar levels. And of course, be one of those preemptive moves that the body makes and will raise your cholesterol, as well as lack of sunlight. So we know that our, you know, vitamin D production is a breakdown product of cholesterol, really important that we get that natural sunlight to be able to help our overall metabolism of cholesterol as well. And Another cause of cholesterol imbalance can be EMFs. So yes, those electromagnetic fields, especially the non-native ones, so not the natural ones from the earth, but the ones that are artificially and synthetically made from our Wi-Fi, from our cell phones, our devices. And this has actually been studied. So in this study, the researchers found that there was significantly decreased levels of the HDL lipoprotein cholesterol. And this was only observed in the high EMF exposure group of humans. And chronic EMF exposure was associated with the change of serum lipid levels. So again, lower HDL, not so good. Remember, HDL is the cleanup mechanism of that LDL. So that was directly related in this study to that EMF exposure. So that's something to really be aware of in terms of, you know, I've got other shows all about EMFs. And I encourage you to check those out here on YouTube if you've not yet seen them and why it's so important to clean up your environment of that EMF exposure. Another cause of cholesterol imbalance can be liver toxicity. And this is why I'm all about doing regular detoxification, including the liver, but the other internal organs as well to get those toxins out. And I usually suggest that you're doing this three to four times a year. I promise we'll share some links below as to a great full body detox that you can take as a herbal supplement. And if your thyroid is low, so if you have an under functioning thyroid, this actually compromises your cholesterol levels. And you can have a high cholesterol because of this, because when you have low thyroid hormone levels, your liver cannot process the cholesterol that it needs. And this is something that, again, as that improper, you know, breakdown of your cholesterol because of low thyroid, it's something that definitely you want to address. And supporting the thyroid gland is something that you can definitely do. And in terms of when you've got low free T3, so that's your active thyroid hormone, this can result in a form of LDL resistance. So now you, you know, it's similar to insulin resistance. Now that LDL and those signaling pathways coming back in terms of giving, you know, the rest of your body, your liver, um, those signals that it needs in terms of having that proper breakdown and cleanup mechanism of your HDL cholesterol as well will not happen if you don't have significant and, you know, the proper amounts of of your active T3 hormone from your thyroid. So all the more reason, whether you're medicated or not for low thyroid to find that support for the thyroid gland so that you have the proper breakdown. And this ties back to the leptin resistance as well. So if you mix, missed my videos on thyroid, please check those out. And of course, leptin resistance as well. Now, there are certain foods that do raise cholesterol. And again, this take this with a grain of salt because we know that our own endogenous production of our cholesterol through the liver is going to sort of compensate. There's always these feedback loops that lets our body know, you know, where our cholesterol levels are at. So the dietary ones, you know, in terms of foods that actually contain cholesterol are less of an issue as compared to now foods like the refined sugar sugars and grains, which can, from a hormonal perspective, increase and raise our cholesterol levels in a way that it probably is not 
the healthiest. So the other group of foods or non-foods are the polyunsaturated fatty acids. So those vegetable oils, the canola oil, these can compromise your healthy cholesterol levels as well. And processed foods in general. So processed meats, packaged foods that have a lot of preservatives and toxins. Again, this will compromise liver function, which I don't like, of course. Uh, and that's why I'm all about doing those regular detoxes. But processed crackers and potato chips and things will definitely have an effect on cholesterol potentially as well. And alcohol, we know because of liver function, but it's also most times sweet. And because of that sugar, it's going to spike the insulin. And now for the hormonal reasons, can be compromising to your cholesterol levels. Now, there are cholesterol lowering drugs, which in my opinion, can really have a negative impact. And a lot of people simply can't take them because of the negative side effects that go along with a lot of muscle pain uh, for people that are needing to take statin drugs. And this is something that the statins actually stop the cholesterol production in the liver. And we know that cholesterol is good for us. And so that you have to kind of ask yourself, well, how healthy can that be? Now, one of the other drawbacks of statin drugs is that they also lower our coenzyme Q10 levels. And that's really important for our cardiovascular health. I've got another show all about CoQ10. So if you missed that, please check that out. And we know that statins have never really been proven to decrease heart disease. And, you know, that makes most people kind of question, well, if it's not been studied and proven to decrease, you know, the risk or the incidence of, of heart disease, then, you know, yes, statins do lower cholesterol levels. Yes, it does that do that. And nobody's denying that. But there's no great correlation between actually helping with cardiovascular health. So again, I ask the question, is it something that is, is it the best way maybe of, you know, balancing and finding that balance with cholesterol levels. And, you know, one of the drawbacks of statins, the big ones is that often someone who is prescribed a statin drug, they start taking it, their cholesterol levels start to normalize. But then and soon after, they, lo and behold, have high blood sugar levels and now need a medication for their diabetes. And this is very, very common. Uh, it's something that I just want people to be aware of. Now, there certainly are more natural ways to deal with high cholesterol. And again, finding that balance with the blood lipid levels. And one of those things are plant sterols, which are found in different natural supplements. And again, what they're doing is inhibiting that absorption of cholesterol in the digestive tract. And I'm going to demonstrate this for you. This is something that I commonly show on television to help to, you know, really appreciate the fact that Mother Nature gives us natural nutrients that can help to do this. So mm -hmm. when we know and when we think about cholesterol, so cholesterol has a certain chemical structure and in the small intestine, it has an absorption site. So this isn't necessarily the friendly cholesterol. And again, we're talking about the balance of your LDL, your HDL. But let's just say this is, you know, for this is sort of the not so friendly LDL cholesterol, which is going in and, and can be related to that plaque formation that fits into that absorption site, not the best thing that we want, because then that ha can have a negative impact on the, that endothelial lining and can cause that plaque formation. So now when we talk about plant sterols, so things like beta cytosterol is a natural ingredient and it looks in chemical structure very much like cholesterol. So guess what? It also can fit into that absorption site for that cholesterol. But now when that less favorable LDL cholesterol wants to get in, it's blocked off. It can't be properly absorbed. And that's just one mechanism how this is working at inhibiting that absorption of that less favorable cholesterol. And that's why I love beta-cytosterol as a natural ingredient. And there are other ones as well, which I'll share. So some other natural ingredients that I love that help with finding that balance with the cholesterol levels includes garlic. So garlic is a natural ingredient that we can include in our cooking, of course, in supplements as well that helps to thin the blood and it helps to lower cholesterol and triglycerides when they are out of balance. It actually helps with lowering blood pressure levels as well. Another ingredient is Google Sterone. And this usually comes from a plant called Comifori Wicti. And 
and this helps to improve the conversion of cholesterol from liver into bile. And remember, we need that conversion to happen because of our bile salts. And this is what helps us to absorb our fats and our fat soluble vitamins more effectively. And it also helps to boost our thyroid activity. So that's why the Google Sterone is really, really important in terms of, especially if you've got low thyroid and a high cholesterol and that imbalance in your blood lipids, this can really be helpful. Another one that I love is called FOT, and this is from Polygonum multiflorum, and it's from the root, and it actually helps to decrease the plaque formation in the artery walls. So these are some of my favorites, and it's something that is really helpful in terms of finding that healthy balance with your cholesterol. So now I'm going to share nine tips for how to balance cholesterol naturally. So tip number one, of course, is the diet. Yes, you want to have more of a focus on anti-inflammatory foods and especially fats and a lower sugar diet. So avoiding those refined carbohydrates and sugars, as well as the grains. And of course, those inflammatory PUFA fats, the polyunsaturated fatty acids like the canola oil, the vegetable oil, fried greasy foods and packaged foods is something that you definitely want to limit or completely avoid. Tip number two is to exercise. And some research has been done on the benefits specifically on HIIT training. So high intensity in interval training as a way to really help help with blood lipid levels. So that's something that you can investigate and doing that, especially, you know, right after you've had maybe a compromising meal that's really spiked your blood glucose levels that, you know, if you do just a little bit of exercise, this can really help to find that balance for that, those insulin. And of course your glucose levels, something that I talked about in my other episode, all about insulin resistance. So if you mix, miss that show, make sure that you check it out. Tip number three is to include some supplements. So this is something that you can definitely find. I promise we'll put some links below this video in terms of balancing those cholesterol levels with some of those herbal medicines that I discussed. Also coenzyme Q10 is very helpful for our cardiovascular health and our blood lipid levels and turmeric as well, because turmeric we know is a potent anti-inflammatory. We know that it's a great antioxidant, but also helps with liver health and gallbladder health and the, the secretion of the bile salts. So that's a really, you know, important go-to herbal medicine. And of course, with turmeric. I have an entire show on turmeric and especially curcumin, which is that active component of the turmeric. You want to look for something that has a 95 percentile of those curcuminoids. Tip number four is to fix your insulin and your leptin resistance. So yes, this is so important. Check out my other shows on these topics. Really important to do that, to find that healthy balance for your cholesterol as well. Tip number five is to support your healthy thyroid function. So especially if you're low thyroid, hypothyroid, this is something that you can definitely do. And I've got shows on low thyroid as well. So check that out. Tip number six is to get your natural sunlight exposure. So we know that connection between cholesterol and your vitamin D formulation is really important for your overall health, your energy levels for longevity, for the antiviral effects. So again, I've got shows on sunlight exposure and vitamin D, so you can check those out as well. Tip number seven is to limit your EMF exposure. So this is really important that in your environment, you're doing everything possible. We can't get away from them completely, you know, unless you go and live in the mountains um, in a remote, remote area and you're totally grounded. I think it's very difficult in our modern world to totally eliminate and be free of EMFs, but we can decrease our exposure and there's certain ways to do that. So check out my videos on EMFs and how to mitigate your risks. Tip number eight is to do a full body detox and especially focusing on liver health, but of course your other internal organs as well. I do recommend doing a full body detox at least three to four times a year at the change of the season to help to eliminate that overall toxicity, get your liver functioning optimally, your gallbladder as well and really ensuring that overall health. And this will help with your cholesterol levels as well. And tip number nine, of course, is the mind-body connection. So remember that stress was a big factor in terms of cholesterol levels and, and your blood lipid levels, your cardiovascular health. We really want to do our best to find peace. And yes, it's a chaotic world. We can all attest to that fact, especially, you know, most recently, but we can do our best to kind of center and connect 
with nature. Nature gives us all the clues as to how to be in tune with nature and really sort of centering down, centering in, focusing on who you are, why you're here, and the greater purpose of our connection with one another will, believe it or not, actually help to find that healthy balance in your cholesterol levels and your lipid levels as well. So I want to thank you for joining me today. We talked all about cholesterol, what they don't want you to know. If you do have questions and comments, I would love to hear from you. So please drop it in the comment section below, share this video as well, and give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe, but also turn on those post notifications by clicking that bell so that you're always aware of my newest and latest uploads. And I do have a lot of meditative videos here on YouTube. So please check them out. If you've got that stress component in your life and you can't get a handle it on it and have difficulty sleeping, use those videos. It will really help you. Everyone has a calling in life and mine is to empower you to live a healthy lifestyle and of course, to do it naturally. Thanks for watching.